Hey guys, welcome to Locave Inside. In this episode, I'm going to show you my personal favorite features of Cubase 11. Check this out. Feature number one is the enhanced sample player. Let's get started with a new sample track. So we just add a new one. So now you can see here a lot of cool features um, over there. Um, let's slice up a loop. So for this, I choose a loop. The old thing is that I only can play this maybe with a MIDI keyboard or whatever. So like this. The new one is you can slice it up. So how to slice that? Um, just enable the slice feature and now it automatically um, finds the transients. A cool one is that you can also um, edit the, the slices. So if you don't like it, maybe over here. Let's check out where it's starting. This is the starting point. Now you can set it up over here. Or you want to add one, then you hold down the Alt key and click inside. and you re-sliced it. Feature number two, the new audio export window. We go and press export, audio mix down. And now you see a new interface of that. So um, I just leave the things in the loop for a while. You can hear now some elements playing. I've got that tracks over here, uh, the bass for example some crash going on. Um, you can export manually the things you already know. So for example, stereo out one and two, and that's it. Now you click to audio export. Um, a new one is that you can queue your things. So maybe you want to export audio one and two, then you say add queue. Now maybe you also want to export um, a group track, for this example I use the drums, then I say okay the drums, but I don't want the drums over here, I maybe want the drums from that point here. Then I say okay that one, add to cue, and um, now I wanna export my FX channel for example. Maybe the chorus over here from that point, add to cue. And now when I click the export button, it bounces out all the audio files, how I needed them or how I want them. It's a really cool feature because it saves me a lot of time, otherwise I only have to go there, click it out, bounce it out, wait until it's finished, then I click the next things, um, bounce it out and so on and so on. And now I can queue them, click um, to export and grab a cup of coffee or whatever, and it does the job for me. Another cool feature is when I now want to bounce out more files at the same time, then I click here uh, to more, and now I can, as you already know, click the files you want to export. In a big project, it's a little bit confusing because you have a lot of tracks, and maybe you don't want all tracks, maybe you only want the bass drum, the synthesizers, to create stems or to sending to the master or mix engineer or whatever. Um, then I can click on them and now hit the link button. And now the cool feature is what I select here in my tracker, it automatically selects it here in the list. So it's a cool improvement um, to get a better overview which files I want to export and which not. Another great feature is that you can save up presets. So I can, uh, here for example, I've saved a preset to export a wave 16-bit 44.1 kilohertz. And um, every time 
I can recall it simply and don't have to adjust all things all the time. I can select which things I want to export. Do I want the insert in the strip as well? Or do I want to deactivate all the things and send out the channels dry? So that's perfect if you send it out to a mix engineer, then you click on the dry button and uh, you don't mess or you don't have the problem to mess around with the, the things that you say, okay, I did forgot to disable something, uh, some instruments, um, some inserts, some whatever. Um, you just press the deactivate button and Cubase does it automatically for you. You also can select to add your group tracks where you send out the tracks um, to a send bus, so the, the effect bus, or you can select um, to add the master and the group in the send as well. So that's really cool. Scale assistant. For that feature, I add a chord track and uh, add something to the chord. So for example, I use this here um, a chord track, put it over there like this. Now I grab, um, I disable the chord track, so I mute it. Um, go to the next one. Double click it, so I create a new one and uh, check this out. I always play the same notes now. Look what happens. Just quantize it because I didn't play it very well <laughs> yet. Now enable the old one. So this is a really helpful feature if you're not into that music theory so much, but you also want to play a cool, great sound. This is perfect for you. Next feature is the new EQ. It's a dynamic EQ I show you now. For example, we go into this one here and here is uh, some bass going on and you do want to reduce the bass a little bit. Frequency. And here I can set dynamic on. Adjust the threshold. And it does it dynamically for me. Uh, let's choose a frequency range where you can hear it a better, in a better way. So you can see it here, um, only if the frequency is uh, hitting the threshold, then it gets reduced, and if not, so it's still there. It uh, is also working the other way around, you can boost frequencies, maybe here for the bass. So only if the frequency um, goes over the threshold, then it boosts it up. That is useful if you want to boost something, but you don't want to boost the mud or the, the noise. So it only um, boosts if the instrument is playing in this frequency range. Imager. There's a new integrated imager now where you can set up the frequency spectrum and only um, spread out or you want to put something on mono on the frequencies that you really want. Let's load imager. And check this out.
On this example, I want to uh, be the frequency below 150 hertz as mono. So I put the width here on the base to zero. So now it stays mono until 150 hertz and only the higher frequencies above 150 hertz um, keep their stereo at the moment. Now I want to adjust the stereo and maybe increase the stereo. Then you go to the width and boost it up. So we make something like this that you can hear it better. Without. With. Without. This is the imager. Supervision is a tool that allows me to monitor um, my audio range. This is a really helpful plugin with a lot of features. Um, it has got a level meter, it has got a loudness meter built in, it has got a spectrum analyzer where you can analyze the curve or um, something like this. You can have a phase scope in different ways. Multi-panorama, that's very cool and it's also useful uh, with the imager. So you can check if the image is still working well or not and then you can adjust it with the uh, image as well. Surround, of course. Waveform if you want, wave scope. A wave scope is sometimes useful if you have got a bass and a bass drum or two bass drums and you want to layer them and you want to be them exactly and maybe you can't hear them uh, properly. So use this uh, wave scope and you can make the adjustments in your uh, milliseconds delay to make the punch perfect. Another great feature is to have the ability to um, paint curves into CC control automation or um, maybe the pitch band I show you now. So now I'm going to draw in some pitch bands like this. And now I can go to the uh, normal selector, hit this object, and now you see I can draw in pitch bands as I need them. This is a really helpful changer for me. It also works with CC automation um, to draw in your lanes or your lines um, like you do it uh, with automation for example. This is really cool to have um, this feature available now. So there was a quick overview over the features in Cubase 11 which I personally like. There are some more but uh, my idea was to keep this tutorial as short as possible. Thank you for watching, see you next time, bye bye.